Hi guys, it's Sarah with Grassroots Evolution, and I'm here today to bring you a monthly message for the sign of Scorpio for August 2020. Keep in mind it's a general message, so take what you feel resonates for you. Disregard the rest. Go about your day, but know that no matter what messages do come through today, it's still up to you and your active free will and the choices you make and the steps you take in this world to get your fulfillment. And for me, that's personal freedom and personal power, and that's wonderful to have in this world. For all my subscribers, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for returning. You guys mean the world to me. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. If you feel like this resonates, please feel free. Hit subscribe. Join the journey with me. Let me encounter your energy more often. It'd be wonderful to have you along this ride. So before I get into the cards today, I'm just going to ask Archangel Michael and my team of light to join us, as well as Archangel Gabriel, to guide, guard, bless, and protect myself, this reading, and any of you who would ask for it, as well as to use me as the clearest channel possible, delivering only the messages that are for the highest good. I'm also going to ask if there's any other um, helper guides here that are looking out for our best, best interest, that they help guide this as well. So let's get started now. I'm going to start off today with the crystal uh, shocker story. It's called the Shocker Wisdom Tarot. So let's see here what an overarching energy is to be aware of for the sign of Scorpio for August 2020. So you have, you guys are showing up loud and proud first off with the Queen of Cups. So this is water quality, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, somebody who follows their heart, leads with their heart, has a big heart as well. And I feel like this is somebody as well, this kind of energy, we deeply feel our emotions. Scorpio, you guys being water, often um, I'm feeling like they're reminding me like in the tarot, death card is kind of you guys right but it's not about endings and darkness it's about rebirth and there's a strength in that and I feel like there's also a strength in our heart when we go through trials tribulations and transformations it's the change within us that builds our strength and I feel like there's a lot of personal strength here with this you also have the seven of swords oftentimes the seven of swords is about lies betrayal um it could be you know, someone has stolen something. This is often a thief in the night. But for me as well, the sevens represent a choice. And the choice is, am I going to carry on with those lies? Am I going to hold on to all of these swords? They're getting pretty heavy. Or am I going to look at some of them and say, you know what? I don't need to carry seven swords. Heck, I only have two hands. So I'm going to drop some of the other ones that are heavy and they're hard to carry. They're laying burdens down on me and let them go. For some of you, this could be like false programming. There's an, a full moon here as well. And I think this is really important with this full moon because it is, it's showing you the lies and deception clearly. So this, this could be a lot of different things. You could have another water sign in your life who... Um, has used manipulation or told a lot of lies and deception you could that may not be at all what it is there could be um, something that you're unclear of or some confusion that lies heavy on your heart as well but whatever it is whatever the confusion if there's been betrayal if there's been things that have just kind of shaken your foundation and rocked you a little bit or rocked your world is what I'm hearing. You're going to see that clearly now and I feel like this is going to be able to put the confusion down to walk away from some of that stuff with a clear mind and I heard an open heart too to remember as we're moving through the cycles, as we're moving through the phases that we go through to say you know what I'm going to keep my heart open and I feel like it's important as well as she only has two hands but this is the seven she's put two swords down she's still carrying five I feel like this as well as really allowing this moon allowing whatever information you receive allowing your intuition to guide you and allowing you to make changes in your world because the five of swords is about change sometimes it's mental conflict it's our own internal struggle but fives are about change and that's all she's choosing to carry as she's walking away so she's choosing to put down the heavy burdens to put down the stuff that um I heard is cutting or has just been hard and to choose what she's walking away with and she's holding a lot of power around here this queen of cups as well the power is from her heart the power comes from the chalice and I feel like that's important too because the more that we open up 
and see more truth and more reality, the more we value ourselves, value our heart, lead by example and follow our heart, the more we keep our heart open, the clearer it is when we start to see lies and deception, when we start to see trickery or confusion. So I'm going to get a little bit more spirit. Please tell me about the Seven of Swords. Thank you. And you get the Six of Cups. For some of you, this is reunion. There could be soulmate energy kind of coming into your surroundings. Definitely a lot of heart surrounding this. This is water as well. So you guys, uh, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. But this is really important because it's like um, something of a bedroom. I'm not exactly sure what that is. But for some of you, this may be... Um, you know, your passion. Um, it may be a lot of different things, but it could be just really opening yourself up to show your emotion. And if if the bedroom thing rang through to you guys with the Six of Cups, this could be a reunion with a past lover or somebody that, you know, um, even if it's not a lover, past friendship or past like something who's dear and close to your heart that kind of may be coming around for a second chance but there may be whatever the seven of swords is that that stuff needs to be dropped in order to move on for others of you if that has no nothing to do with the bedroom i feel like it's saying you know what for you to keep your open heart and to come back to you this doesn't have to be about a soulmate or any other kind of relationship. It could just be, you know what, the more you're loving yourself and seeing through the lies that other people have told you or you've told yourself or the confusion and the dust clouds that have kind of clouded your way, whatever has been hidden that's now being revealed, it's going to help you to fully express yourself, to express your love as well into the world. And I think that as well as the more we drop those swords and the more we kind of release what we have held in the confines of our mind when we start to see clearer we start to be a lot more peaceful and loving in most of the relationships around us so tell me about six of cups please clarifying the seven of swords so what is the six of cups please Some of you may be caught by complete surprise, too, with the Seven of Swords here. It may be surprising to you. You may um, have, it may be a conversation with somebody, whatever this moon is in the Seven of Swords, like whatever the illumination is, it may catch you by surprise. You may also, um, what I heard is, the way they're putting it to me you may have also thought something was a certain way and then we talk to somebody else or another person involved and they say no I never meant to hurt you I never meant to say that in a way I should have apologized I was afraid you know all of those things you could be really shocked by whatever kind of conversation comes in with this seven of swords I definitely feel like there's twofold um, it's mental. I keep hearing telepathy too. So some of you may have a very strong connection um, with another person. You may also, other than just like a mental telepathy, you may have a heart connection with someone. So you're actually potentially able to feel um, what their heart is trying to tell you, if that makes sense. We have the Eight of Swords here, so definitely a lot of sword energy, and they want me to show you the bottom, and I'm going to take it as judgment. So with this judgment, and temperance is underneath it, oh my gosh, with the High Priestess, I'm going to take this one too, is the Fool, the Hanged Man, the Sun, and just this one, Sorry, I lied. There's one more after this. This is two of wands, a bit of a decision. And underneath there, there's the moon. And I love this deck. When I got this deck, I opened it up and I shuffled. I was like, why? Why did I have to buy you? This was the card. Because it's about the yin and the yang. It's about those two wolves. And if you've ever heard sort of some of the um, native stories, there's this one about the two wolves, about... Both are hungry and both are fighting inside of you. Which one wins? The light or the dark? Well, it's whatever you feed. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight major arcana came out from the bottom of the deck. And what's awesome about this is being judgment. 
This is finally being able to see the truth, seeing through the dust clouds, seeing through whatever's been hidden, to bring balance into your world, to be stable and to be grounded. And I'm really feeling with this Queen of Cups, with the Six of Cups, with this energy, as this confusion starts to move, as we start to work through this, we're going to find ourselves a whole lot more balanced. And this is also about connecting to your inner knowings, connecting with the High Priestess to what you feel to be true, your intuition, connecting with your guides as well. And I feel like this is important that the Fool jumped out. The Fool jumped out because it's time to make a leap. It's it's the power's in your hands. Once you start to, to move through and get clarity on things, this judgment means that you are telling the truth, that you can see the truth. Truth is being shared to you. You're not feeling like somebody's keeping secrets. Excuse me. And the sun being here, whatever you are about to and go through, whatever endeavor you're working on, whatever decision, whatever choice you have in front of you, it's going to lead to success. Often the sun can be a yes card. So if there's a question that you, you've been thinking about or if there was something in this that you're like, what is that about? Could be this. Well, I ask you to trust your intuition with the high priestess. Trust your inner knowing. Trust that part of yourself that already knows without needing to go to cards or anything like that. There's success. I feel like it's really important here with the hanged woman as well. Because with the hanged woman, with the two of wands, this is a choice. Also with the seven of swords. We're choosing what we're going to believe. We're choosing our outlook on things. We're choosing on how we choose to see this world. And I do definitely feel with this, some of you may want to howl at the moon. There may be significance to the next full moon as well i'm not sure when that is i do know that we are currently today i'm filming on august 18th uh the 18th 19th area this is a new moon coming up so perfect time in the darkness to reflect um you're not going to have the moon energy to shine light on things i feel like this is the point where you can see in the dark with this high priestess keep that and choose in this new moon cycle to create a new cycle to let the past go and to walk with your head held high firmly and to see like whatever your reunion is whatever comes back to you that it may be something i heard that you may be getting something that was once lost to you whatever this six of cups is after you clear your mind with the eight of swords here too this has been probably something even maybe since childhood that we've held on to, right? Feelings of ourself that may have felt unworthy or feelings of ourself that felt unbalanced, unlovable. Once we start to get rid of those core wounds and kind of like ingrained belief systems, you're balancing out and it'll help you make a lot better choices in your world. The hangman, they're asking me to grab a message from the book, but... The moon, the full moon, the next full moon may be really important for you. So I'm not sure if it's August or September. That would be some research if you guys are interested in it. But both of these wolves, the light and the dark, there is a connectedness to spirit. And the moon is also connecting to our feminine intuition, connecting to the ethers, seeing through the fold, seeing what is not there in the physical to actually see. And that's also this Queen of Cups energy because she's very in tune with her emotions. She's very in tune with her femininity. And this is regardless of whether you identify as a man or a woman, how much, um, you know, you, you see yourself as feminine or masculine, even if you are a woman, if you may not see yourself as a feminine. But what I feel like this is saying is like, here's these feelings. What are feelings? They're messengers from your, your body, messages from your soul to say, hey, something didn't sit right with me. Or, hey, I'm feeling really wonderful. You know, however it is to trust in your own feelings and trust in the awareness that you have and that all you need is within you already. I feel like that was important to say. So there's a lot the universe is bringing in right now. There's a lot of energy that is at your fingertips to harness and it's up to you and your choices on how you move through this. 
So the Three of Swords was under that. That's usually about heartbreak. And it's something where this is the yellow. This is something that has hurt you enough that may have shaken your self-esteem. Whatever that situation is, I feel like it's tied to the Seven of Swords and the Eight of Swords. There being like something was not true and that you internalize that and it, it kind of blurred your vision. But now is the time to let it go. To see the heartbreak for what it was. To see your feelings as messages from spirit. To open up, to communicate, and to make your choices. So that if you're choosing whatever this reunion is, you're choosing, you know, I don't want that. Oh, well, that's your choice. You get to make that choice and always do what feels right to you. So I'm going to bring... Um, a message from the Keeper of the Light Oracle and just see what spirit has for us what ascended masters may be helpful for you what information might be helpful in the next month for August for Scorpio 2020 August 2020 what messages do you have um, I was feeling like because it took so long to shuffle earlier I was feeling like this is a long-awaited decision or something that you've been thinking about quite a while we got Radha with Soul Flame. Rediscover a lost part of yourself. Experience relationship harmony and healing. And absolutely, this is the time with relationship with ourself even. To rediscover parts of ourself when we let go of the confusion. When we let go of the fear-based mentalities, the fear-based thinking, taking actions on fear or feeling like the lack and there's not enough. The more we heal, the more we really do see more parts of ourselves. And what I'm going to say with this is actively go out and have fun. Do things that make your soul shine. Call on Radha if you need to with your soul flame. And two more that came out, we have Green Tara. Supreme protection. You're absolutely protected to do that. You are protected. Cords are being cut. Move beyond limitation and trust. One of the things with this as well as I'm hearing with the Seven of Swords, if there's people around you or energies around you that like to keep you confused, that don't like to give you straight answers, who don't, um, who don't speak the truth, Know that you can cut the cords from that. You don't have to ha maintain that energetic connection. So you don't have to do anything crazy for it. One thing that you can just do is sit quietly. Envision you and this person. And envision the cord between you. Some of it could be a string. I've seen them depending on you know how long we've known these people. How many interactions we've had. The, the nature of our relationship with them. The cords can look different. Um, I know I've seen them as umbilical cords. I've seen them as cables. I've seen them as string. I've seen them, you know, lots of different ways. Once even a mirror, you know, like, and however you envision this, pay attention to how it makes you feel. If in this time when you're going and intentionally, I'm going to cut cords with this person, I'm going to release myself from their energetic hold or release the energetic connection, um, pay attention to how did it make you feel? Was it difficult? And if it's difficult, but you know it's for your higher good, push on. There may be still some stuff, and I heard like a bleeding out that comes from this. You may um, go through some more healing. But we have here, what's his name? Jawal Cool Dharma Unfolding. This is stuff along your path. Remember that you are on a path. Take one step at a time to happiness. And if we've felt, I heard judged, or held down by another person's belief or um, toxicity even or even just if we have not been living our life for us and not following our heart but we've been doing things for other people this is really this great time to cut the cords know that you're protected to do so call in green Tara ask for her protection and ask to be guided along this journey towards the light, towards rediscovering your light in authenticity, being in harmony with yourself, and knowing that it's a process, one step at a time, my friends. So, we got a few minutes. I got one, I've got two more decks here. I want to bring a message first 
from this is the healing with the angels oracle so what kind of healing would be most beneficial i love this enchantment finding things that make us feel like a kid again having fun for some of us, I feel like that Seven of Swords could have been us getting in work mode and feeling like, well, to be an adult, to be a big girl or be a big boy, these are the kinds of things I need to do. To be successful, this is the kind of stuff I need to do. Well, you're growing up a little bit going, you know what? I've got all this stuff. I've got what it means to be successful, but I'm not happy. Well... I feel like this is a really important time. The unicorn here as well is like, believe in the enchanted. Find things that set your soul ablaze and light you on, not light you on fire literally, but light your soul on fire that remind you of things that you forgot all about yourself. And some of this reunion, the Six of Cups, is really coming back into wholeness with yourself and rediscovering the joy of life that you have for yourself and the bottom of the deck is miracles my friends engage in things that bring back childlike wonder they also have at the bottom friendship lean on your friends call your friends up when you need them spend some time with your friends as well um engage in for some of you um, for some of you, I heard foreplay, if it, if it is um, like a romantic relationship, doing, if, if, if that resonates as well, the foreplay part, that's in engaging in play, right? Sexual play, being able to experience joy with another person, with yourself, even if you are not... Um, you know, if you're not with anyone or there's no interest, it doesn't mean that you can't still romance yourself, okay? But I feel like for some of this, this is really finding the joy of life again and engaging in sacred pleasures. So I'm going to bring the last message I have today is from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. This is by Elena Fairchild. I'm going to ask for one message that we can use for healing. And um, there's a healing process in the book we can go through, okay? Oh, thank you. Already there is value, and at the bottom with carnelian is nourishment. So this carnelian, um, it is showing it as very, very red. Sometimes it is more, like, um, more orange. But with that, I feel like, you know, nourish your soul. Nourish your body. And I'm going to take it as root. Temperance and the Fool and the Eight of Swords are all root chakra issues, right? Things we hold on to, we went through cycles of being in balance really is how we balance out our emotions and our self, how grounded we are. And sorry, this is the Fool, there's Temperance, right? How grounded we are and how moving through our life, if we maintain balance and we nourish this body, we nourish our soul, we're going to experience that we actually have a lot more energy to make those jumps, make those leaps. And you know what? Enchantment. This is so important. So expect miracles. Never give up. Okay? Never give up on miracles. Already there is value. Goddess Matanji and Heliotrope. So Heliotrope is the stone. Already there is value. I'm going to grab the book for this and see um, what kind of messages we get. So for some of you, before I move on to that, Carnelian may be something that you would like to um, like to work with. They also showed me Archangel St. Germain, sorry, with Amethyst and Spiritual Connection. So for some of you, for sure, maintaining and working on your spiritual connection um, and rounding yourself into the physical, into this physical world so that you are a complete circuit. You're connected to heaven. You're rooted down into this earth. So let's see number 43. And they want me to tell you that's a seven. So about choices and something very spiritually guided. Okay, so I'm going to hold it up so you can see the mandala and just focus on it. Any messages that come to you, be open to them. And if I trigger you throughout this, why? What did they say? Where did it hit you in your energy centers? And how can you use that information in your day-to-day -day lives to create a better world for yourself going forward? 
We bring you the empowerment to see that already there is value. It is a natural for creative energy to become excited by new possibilities, new ideas, and new forms. It is also possible, however, for creative energy to become engaged in liberating the undiscovered value within that which already exists, polishing it until it shines with divine light. Sometimes there is a need to shed the past and all associated with it completely, starting afresh. However, at other times there is something of value from the past that can, if allowed to bask in the light of your creativity, become very valuable for your future. In your enthusiasm to move forward in life, don't forget to take the value that already exists in your world along with you. So before we get into the, the healing process, I'm going to ask if you guys would like to join me. Take your shoes off, spread your toes apart. We're going to take three deep breaths in just to kind of allow this healing. Um, we're going to ask that spirit brings in white light down through our crown. Ask it to flow through your body, down through your feet, out into the world with love. And we're going to breathe in love and light. We're also going to breathe in value and wholeness and acceptance for ourselves going forward. And as we breathe out, we're intentionally going to ask spirit to breathe out anything that's negative or authentic, inauthentic to our being and that's destructive to our own core value system out into the world with love to be transmuted. Okay? So, first deep breath in, guys. Breathing in love and light and wholeness and value, internal value. Hold it here at your heart. And with your breath, release anything that is negative or inauthentic to your being. Out into the world with love. Second breath. Breathing in love and light. And I heard energy cleanse. This is cleansing our energy and moving what is stagnant. Let's bring that white light down. See it and imagine it breaking everything up. Anything that's stagnant, let's help that move through our feet and release anything negative or inauthentic out through your breath now. And the last time, guys. Breathing in love, light, wholeness, enchantment. And breathe out anything that tells you you are not worthy of all of those things. Okay. So as I read this, um, you guys can follow along, repeat after me. You can ask Spirit to speak through me for some of this to give you the healing process and just be actively engaged and with the words that are being said. And there is, um, at the very end, there's a few affirmations that would help you a lot if you said it yourself. So... I'm going to read you guys this. I call upon the crystal angel of heliotrope and goddess Matanji, who love me unconditionally. Thank you for the divine healing empowerment to see that already there is value. May I be guided by divine grace and intuition to recognize that which can be developed in value and that which is best discarded. May divine wisdom and transformational creativity be awakened within the human collective, encouraging intelligent use reuse, reinvention, and transformation of resources for the betterment of all life on earth through divine compassion and my own free will, so be it. So what it also to integrate this? They will ask me to take this and put it above my abdominal area. You don't have this, but you can take it with your hand, okay? And just kind of stick it um, facing inwards, resting o over your liver, sorry, so on the upper right side of your abdominal area. Relax, and let's just take a few deep breaths. And we're going to say out loud, I ask through my own free will and divine grace to be blessed with the ability to filter through and intelligently process all that enters my energy field. May that which can nourish life be utilized to its full capacity in service to love. May that which is best discarded be done so with reverence, for it may serve another in other ways. May divine discernment be awakened within every human heart through divine empowerment and unconditional love, so be it. And we're going to ask a little prayer here. May divine love bring awareness of the value of what already is to every human heart 
May all beings be supported in filtering what is no longer needed and honoring what is of genuine benefit to the soul. According to divine grace and in service to the divine feminine wisdom evolving through humanity at this time, so be it. And the, the affirmation here is, I choose to honor and integrate the full beneficial extent of that enters my world, and I discard with reverence and gratitude that which no longer serves my soul. So I love you guys. I hope you have a great month. Release what is no longer for you and accept everything that is, my beautiful ones. Bye, guys.